Will from Fallow here. We're heading down to Somerset today to uh, go to William Sitwell's Supper Club. William Sitwell is an editor, writer, food broadcaster. Uh, very well known for his work on MasterChef. He's been to our restaurant, he's enjoyed it, and he's written about us in the Telegraph. So we've got this good personal relationship with him. Yeah, so we're hoping to do a little bit of foraging on um, the back of William Sitwell's estate. So maybe some sorrel, maybe some wild garlic, maybe a little bit of Alexander, we're not sure yet, but we'll see when we get there. Um, Jack's staying here to uh, steady the ship. Let's go. Right, so we're here at William Sitwell's place. We're gonna do an amazing six course tasting menu for these uh, lucky guests in this converted barn. Barbecue's looking pretty, uh, pretty, worse. pretty, pretty worse for wear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it's not been used for about 20 years. Right, so the guys are getting ready, finishing off their little bits, so we're gonna go and forage for some sorrel. So there's a bit of downtime before the event, so we're just gonna go quickly find a few ingredients that we can use on some of the dishes. It's prime wild garlic season. Wild garlic grows in these beautiful sort of shady, um, sh sort of slopes by river riverbeds. They love the shade. Um, they love like da damp conditions. The thing is really with foraging, it's you walk, you see what you find, basically let nature do the work. Some days it'll be sorrel, sometimes it'll be wild garlic, but you know, you can go out for hawthorns, you can go out for elderflower at this time of year. Um, but it's something rare, because obviously we're based in London, it's so nice sometimes to get out. Just sort of take advantage of what the countryside has to offer. So yeah, there's a, there's a lot of strange bylaws to do with um, with foraging in the UK. The, the thing with um, the Royal Parks in London is it's absolutely against law to, to take any produce from the Royal Parks. Um, and then even on private land. So if, you're, if a private landowner um, tells you to, basically we're allowed to actually take the food. It's not the issue. Um, but obviously at that point you are trespassing. So they can ask you to leave, but they can't technically confiscate your food. Um, but there's lots of little nuances to this. Um, the right of way means that we can forage anywhere on, on um, land that's publicly owned. Um, but again, there's some restrictions to this, as, which makes sense, like you don't want to uproot plants. Like when you forage, you need to do it responsibly because basically you want to preserve the plants for the next yeah, so if you come along and you just strip an area of woodland and pull them all up by the roots, you're effectively just sort of deforest, this is a mini form of deforestation and you're not gonna get life there the next year. So whenever you do these things, even if you find the most amazing patch of morels or um, morel mushrooms, just take what you need. Never, never strip the land um, because basically it means that you, um, the next year, you won't be able to find it in the same place because um, they don't reproduce as well. 
There was a story recently about um, some guys in Devon who just came up, came down to their lovely uh, shady patch of uh, garden and their whole area of land had just been completely stripped by, by a, a local restaurant who sends his chefs in there to get them. And um, we've sent our chefs to get elder, el, elderflower. At one point we were, we were taking fig leaves from outside the, uh, the National Gallery. <laughs> we, do it, we, do it, um, we do it fairly responsibly and um, we're limited by being in London. So what we want to try and get across the, to the, at the evening tonight is, look, we've, we can't forage on our doorstep, but what we've done is built a mushroom farm in there. So effectively we have foraged goods on the menu at all times. Um, and they're, cu they're cultivated, uh, beautiful mushrooms that we put a lot of care and love into ourselves and pick them to order. Here's some sorrel here. So this is sorrel. It's um, Quite, it's quite an interesting like old English herb. It used to be used a lot back in the day. Um, there's loads of references to it in like historical recipes, uh, but it's something that we don't, we don't use as much of considering how much it grows. Like if you think people go crazy for wild garlic, but sorrel sort of grows all year round. Um, it's got quite an astringent flavor, which means it goes really well with fish because it contains acid and some sorrels taste a little bit like lemon. Some sorrels taste crazy, even even tasting something similar to um, to like uh, a lime or a grapefruit. But they've always typically got this really acidic freshness, which works really, really well on some, maybe some richer dishes or some veggie dishes or some fish dishes. Um, yeah, you can make this into sauces. You can make this into like a, a sorrel pesto, really nice and zingy. Um, you can even like mix it into pasta dough. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a stunning ingredient. I think we'll use it with the, the beef ribs today, just to cut through a little bit of that sort of meaty richness. So we're cooking these cod's heads on the barbecue for William Sitwell's supper uh, I'm drinking the bread for the parfait. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice to get out really. All the way in Dorset, nice long drive, but very nice to be here now. Um, as in terms of the menu, please taste some of the food. Um, this is the tartar, uh, the beef tendon. Uh, these are our lion's mane mushrooms that we grow in. And that's Harry Hirsch, who's on table six. That's that table up here, closest to me. Hey, Harry Hirsch. Coming all the way over here, and from all the way over there, it's Will Murray, chef and co-founder of Fallow. Um, share, love, enjoy, um, and ask me any questions at the end of the program. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, 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 there's the kitchen. Get busy. Yeah. Will Murray.
Right, so this is a sorrel that we found earlier. So we're just going to serve this with our beef rib dish. And this goes really, really well with the carrots on the dish. Half 11, we're finished for the day. Now we're going to have a plastic shampoo.